Hi everyone, I'm Liz Wright and I'm Head of Classics at Dr Chaloner's High School. At Chaloner's we offer both Latin and Classical Civilization all the way up to A level. I love classics, I love teaching classics and I love teaching classics at Chaloner's. I'll be teaching you for verse literature um, and verse on scenes. Your uh, prescribed authors for A-level are Catullus, the rather scandalous Roman poet. Uh, we'll be reading a selection of his very, very heartfelt and beautiful poetry, often amusing as well, his poetry. Um, and in year 13, we'll be reading book 12 of Virgil's Aeneid. It's the exciting showdown between Aeneas and his love rival Turnus. As well as your set text authors, Cicero, Catullus and Virgil, you'll also be exploring the works of two other major Roman writers, the historian Livy and Ovid the poet, who is also pretty scandalous. Hello, I'm Mr. Cox. You might have seen me before if you're studying about classical civilization, or you might be about to see me if you're studying classical civilization, but this is about Latin. Uh, and he, uh, we take you beyond your GCSE Latin uh, to the other grammar that you haven't learned at GCSE level. Uh, and we take you on to uh, new magnificent fields of Latin literature that you haven't experienced before. Uh, we do both a prose text and a verse text. I will be teaching the prose text uh, for next year's contingent for the year the year group beginning in 2021 September 2021 uh, and that is an amazing speech of Cicero's uh, called the Pro Cluentio uh, which uh, Cicero is trying to defend uh, this guy Cluentius uh, and most of it is a character assassination of the guy who is bringing the charge against Cluentius um, who is a murderer and an assassin and he is just an incredibly awful human being. Uh, there are far, there are, it is far and away the greatest character assass assassination I've ever seen in any, in any text of, of, that I've read from the classical world. Uh, you know, this guy bumps off multiple wives in order that he can marry, you know, his brother's wife, you know, people, it's just completely, just immorality, really. Uh, so if you like that sort of thing, no, I'm only joking. It's, uh, it's incredible to see the rhetoric that Cicero brings to the table to, uh, to demolish the character of this person. And indeed, he wins the case. We're not, quite, we're not quite sure what the numbers were in terms of how the voting broke down. Uh, but, you know, this is really, really interesting to study, both from a kind of legal and rhetorical and like fake newsy kind of, is it, it in a topical, uh, you know, creating a discourse out of nothing. Uh, and understanding logos, ethos and pathos, which are the three kind of ways in which you convince an audience, logos being, you know, you convince them through reason and logic, reasoned argument, ethos, where it's like an appeal to, to convention or you appeal to, you know, you say something about this, but, you know, this, he's not the kind of guy who would have done that. Look at him, he's an excellent character. Uh, or you say, would I lie to you? I'm not that sort of character. I would never lie to you, so I must be telling the truth, so you need to believe me, right, right, right? Or you use pathos, the third kind, uh, which you might know that pathos kind of means emotion. Uh, yeah, it's an emotional appeal where you, uh, you basically say, if you don't believe me, then your mother's gonna be not proud of you. So you better believe me. It's that kind of thing. It's that kind of manipul emotionally manipulative uh, uh, kind of argument. And Cicero is not above making those, but it's actually studying them and the sort of symphony of persuasion that Cicero creates in the speech and just the blackening of this poor guy, Oppianicus's character, is really something to behold. And, you know, something you can learn from uh, just as long as you learn to use it for good and not evil, right? No, don't use it for evil. Uh, so I think that concludes my, my uh, explanation of what Latin will be like, at least the prose section and the, and the new grammar. And uh, it definitely will be a, a very fun roller coaster ride of, uh, of a year, a couple of years. So I look forward to seeing you. Um, hi, I'm Ella. I'm the subject prefect this year for classical civilization and Latin, which I study both of these alongside history at A level. For me, studying Cicero has been my favourite part of A level Latin so far. I've really enjoyed being able to read Cicero's work in its original and see the uh, impact his work had on the politics of Rome at the time particularly from a first-hand source who was dealing with this as it's unfolding. 
Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm a year 13 student taking Latin for A-level, along with biology, further maths and maths. I really enjoy taking Latin because it combines linguistic skills with essay writing, as well as learning about ancient history. In previous years, students had the opportunity to go on trips to Hadrian's Wall, Italy and Greece to see the ancient sites that they study in person. This has allowed them to get a better understanding and context of the subjects that they study and the impact that what they are studying had on society for the time. We offer a number of supercurricular activities. We have a classic society which is run by Ella, a wonderful prefect. We have a classical book club. Um, we offer Greek twilight classes. Every December we have a charity quiz to celebrate the Roman festival of Saturnalia, although this year that will be online. We have a number of new extracurricular opportunities coming up, including spoken Latin for beginners, Latin beyond the syllabus, concentrating on female authors and the ancient world beyond the syllabus. Both Mr Wright and Mr Cox have been nothing but supportive and encouraging of me and other students throughout my time at Chalmers. Constantly giving up their free time to answer my numerous questions or making sure that we're prepared for exams. Their dedication and passion for the subject does not go unnoticed by anyone who is supported by them.